Okay. If you give it some, some room, it'll end up wanting to come apart. Now, once you have it almost apart, there's one more spring here. Uh, that you gotta do. Which is this larger spring. Now this larger spring connects this like this. Put that away. All right guys, so like I said, spring uh, removal. So now you can just take these apart. There is a air hose here, of course. Okay, not too bad. Scoot the camera in a little bit. Okay, right? So make sure you don't lose that. And this is what we're looking for here. This component still wet with fuel. Uh, and it's concerning how this side isn't, so. Okay. So, this is what I need to replace. So this is a new one that I replaced earlier, and this is a stock OEM one. So, unfortunately, this one was still leaking, but just not as much as these old ones. So I'm thinking that if I replace all of the old ones with these new ones, uh, and then run the motorcycle for a little bit, let the heat expand these to fill up uh, soften and fill up these um, you know the gaps where the fuel might be leaking that will be better off but as it stands now uh, all of the old ones are leaking so I need to replace three more of these so we're gonna go ahead and grab our o-ring accessory kit this is just a you know Chinese one that I had bought from Amazon so if we carefully open this up you'll see the assortment of o rings okay and I can actually tell you here temperature wise 248 degrees Fahrenheit that's 120 Celsius that's probably enough bike gets a little hotter than that but It'll be fine. So, uh, I'm using the, uh, I believe these are, let's see, 10 by two, maybe. I don't know, you'd have to get in, make you maybe 12 by three millimeters. I don't know, the measurements on these are kinda, they're probably not accurate to be qu quite honest, but we're gonna go ahead and replace those. And, um, and uh, that's pretty much it, that's how we'll do it. Now, like I said, this is one of the new ones right here, and uh, this is one of the old ones. So we're going to go ahead and replace those, and um, I guess we'll, we'll get back to you. All right, guys, so I went ahead and replaced those O-rings, and now I'm putting the unit back together. That's all I had to do. Now, if you have to do something else, um, of course, you go ahead and do that. For example, maybe you need to, you know, replace this choke uh, cable holder maybe you need to replace some of these bolts or something um right now the only thing i'm doing is replacing the, the o-rings on that little uh, connector there the t connector now uh putting the spring back in don't remember uh, sorry don't forget to put the spring back in um and for the left side or right side depending on for one side of the carburetor depending on how you're looking at it this uh component needs to go in there you just, you know, squeeze it back together, make sure that all the um, places are, are flush, you know, all the uh, uh, mating surfaces, okay? And um, that's pretty much it. So remember to put your screw, uh, your spring back in, okay? That little spring right here that joins these two carburetors. Now, 
I'm not sure if the camera, you'll be able to see it or pick it up on the camera, but these two throttle, um, uh, I think they're called uh, butterfly valves, maybe? Are these butter butterfly valves? I'm not quite too sure. But uh, these valves that open, they're at different heights and it's kind of difficult to see on camera. Maybe you can see it or not, but they're at different heights. So this one on the right, if I line it to the camera, is a little bit higher than the one on the left. And of course that is because you unscrewed this screw to get the spring out, we have to readjust it. So it's really the same thing. You just go back in here with your screwdriver and you give it a few turns. And of course, this is gonna be kind of by eye. You're gonna have to sort of, uh, you know, eye it out, but sort of try to get those as even as possible. And um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, but it doesn't have to be close because you don't want, you know, one engine or sorry, one cylinder, you know, receiving more fuel or air than the other one. It's not good news for anyone at all. Now, one way you could tell when adjusting these, uh, I probably won't be able to pick it up on camera, but you can see in here in there's in this valve oh you can't pick it up okay so in this chamber there's a little hole right where the bottom of this valve closes there's a little hole right there you can even see some carbon residue from the fuel because that's where the fuel comes in okay and as long as this valve covers that up then you're golden as long as both valves cover that hole up you see those little two holes that pop up in the bottom So as long as those are covering it up, you're good to go. They look pretty good. So on to the next. And again, the next one is the exact same thing. Um, and that's how you do it. So uh, we'll get back to you once the uh, carbs are fully assembled. All right, guys, welcome back. So we are back to getting the carburetors together. Had to bring out the W. Uh, you can use that just to spray the springs where the lever pulls back on the, uh, to open up the, the throttle. So these springs right here, you could use a little W and, uh, so now we're going to go ahead and join up the two carburetors. Remember we still had this hose that goes between them. So don't forget that over right here. Okay, now, uh, we're going to go ahead and join them, missing anything else, uh, that looks to be everything, so we're just going to go ahead and join them up, just like that, simple as that, joining uh, the two pairs, okay. Now remember, um, remember this spring, this is how we connect both carburetors. Okay, so we gotta get the, that spring in there. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. This. Okay, I could use a little bit more room. So I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen this up a little bit. I'm holding the valve down with my thumb so I can get spring in here. Okay. There you go. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten up that screw through the uh, through the other side of the carburetor until the two pairs of throttle bodies they open at the same time. 
um, when I pull this large wheel here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then get back to y'all. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and um, join these carburetors back up. Uh, actually, while I'm here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close the bleeder valves on the carbs. That's just a uh, flathead that we close in right here. These are so you can get the fuel out of the boats, out of the uh, carburetors, uh, sorry, out of the floats, where the floats are, just the lower compartment. Uh, okay. Okay. They don't have to be too, too tight, just enough to close them. Okay, and if you all remember, we have these uh, bolts, and that's how we tighten them up, that's how we get them together. We're going to go ahead and put this here. Okay, let's go ahead and do the bottom one before we fully tighten everything. Bottom one here. Okay. Make sure these are facing out. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and give those a nice tightening. Remember, the only thing these rails are doing is holding the carburetors together so they don't have to be ridiculously tight. Just get them nice and snug. Okay, so that was the 10 mil. I believe this is the... This one's 8? Yep. 8 mil. Okay. Okay, wonderful. So, those are tightened. Now we need to get the um, the choke rail back on. Remember that this um, choke cable holder needs to be back on. Don't forget about this piece. This is when you join the carburetors together. So don't lose this piece right here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and actually put this spring back on. Remember, it goes right here. Okay, put that back on. All right, let's go ahead and before we set the rails, of course, we need our uh, boot and washer combo. Dig that out of this box. So these are the old O-rings. Go to the side. Try to find these. Okay. Woo! I don't want to lose these. Now there's four. Um, sort of. I guess. Uh, screw holes but you only need two so we put the washer and then the boot there and the washer and the boot here okay. and this goes like this Okay, now the key is to get the rails, they have little hooks, and they pull on each of these carburetor uh, pistons, 
and this whole thing will then slide out. Okay, so that's why we need to make sure that every hook is, and I'll show you here in a little bit, once I finish screwing these here in. Okay. No reason really don't have to be crazy tight either, just enough to hold this fuel rail in place. Okay, this one might be a little tricky here. A little bit of time and angle. So, this fuel rail, you see, has these little hooks, and each of them attaches to another point in the carburetor section. So, gotta make sure those are all in. Okay. And double check, these are tight. Okay. Again, be careful because these are old. You don't want to strip these. Definitely not. Okay, so now uh, all that's left is reattach these hoses. Okay, air, air. This is fuel. And then we can get the carburetor back on the bike. And uh, of course, to get it back on is just this whole process um, in reverse. So um, I don't think I'll really video that part. I mean, it's straightforward. You put these back on, put the carburetor back onto the where the engine uh, meets the carburetor, of course, where the boots are. Make sure you tighten those boots up, uh, and then. You reattach the cables and um, get your uh, airbox air, air box back on. I guess I'll film reattaching the cables because that can be kind of tricky. So I'll see you then. All right, guys. So I have the carbs back in, um, the throttle cables, I should say. So, uh, yeah, these are a little tricky, but... Uh, but it's nothing you can't do because the trick is that when you have these carburetors, you got to get this uh, throttle line uh, into this little slot. Now, this is the return. So if I pull, it loosens up. So the really the only thing that you have to do, the only hint here is this uh, actual cable. You can feed through here by pushing the carburetor this way. And that is that gets you a lot of slack to get these cables in uh that was really the only trick uh again this is not really doable with uh with uh one hand so i'm gonna have to use two hands here and i'm gonna go ahead and put the rest in Uh, 
Okay, guys. Now we just gotta get the uh let's call the carpet back on with a firm yet light push. Okay. First of all. Tightening up the clutch cable. We line these up. And then we simply push. This. You want to wiggle it in there, sort of push it from top and bottom, side to side. And now, all that's left is to um, tighten it up, uh, tighten up the, the, the uh, what are they called? The boot clamps, of course. Make sure that's nice in there, nice and snug. And then put the airbox back on and uh, see if she runs. All right, guys. So carbs back on, tanks back on. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, try to uh, turn it on. Now remember the carbs are empty, they have no fuel. And this motorcycle, the F2 is vacuum fed. So uh, until you get the pistons pumping, uh, moving up and down, there's not gonna be any fuel going to the carb. So when we crank it, the fuel is gonna start to get into the carbs. As soon as it finds itself into the engine, gets the spark, we should have ignition. Okay. 